Perk, the question to Greg Berhalter, what can you take from a blowout win? What did you take from the big victory over Ghana? It's funny because if you look at it, let's bring Germany to the equation where the second half versus Germany was the worst 45 minutes that I've seen from Greg Berhalter's U.S. men's national tenure to the first half against Ghana, which is the best 45 minutes I've seen mm. in Greg Berhalter's U.S. men's national team tenure. So the ability to switch off a bad performance in the same window and say, we need to move on to the next and not only get better, but get superiorly better than you've done in the past. You can see the numbers. That's what I take away. For as young as this team is, they're coming into their own. A mistake versus Germany, yes. In big part to the players, what they didn't do, the simple schoolboy errors, the lack of uh, attention to detail or concentration, the tactics, if you will, um, not respecting who Germany is, trying to play them a tu por tu, toe to toe, didn't work mm -hmm. out too well for, for Greg Berhalter, to then saying, okay, we need to turn the page and against Ghana, this is how we can hurt them. We need to be smart. We need to press them smartly. And that they did. And they forced Ghana into very compromising positions. I thought Greg Berhalter got it completely right in the first half. Mm -hmm. Again, with Giovanni Reina electing to go twice to start him when many thought he wouldn't. Uh, listen, pressed all the right buttons in that first half. He mentioned the second half. He was a little disappointed that the solutions didn't uh, bring those solutions or didn't or the level dropped off. That's gonna happen when you make six changes. I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. It's gonna happen when you make that many changes. He does it because he wants to see players. Maybe if you're in a, I don't know, a competitive game or something else, you let it go so there's more fluidity in these games. But I, I like the performance. I like the bounce back performance that I saw from this team. I think, Herc, it's a real good reminder of where this program is and the progress that it is making, right? Because after the Germany game, it's fair for a lot of fans to say, hey, well, if we're losing 3-1, and pretty clearly beyond that, forget the score, forget, just think about how it felt for a US fan watching that game against Germany. You're thinking, okay, the, the ceiling for this team is not what it was. This team is not as good as we maybe thought that they were. We can say whatever we want about Ghana, and there were definitely some moments, both against Mexico and against the US, where I don't wanna say they looked unprofessional, but maybe they looked disinterested. Um, or not as focused as I would have expected from a Ghana team. This is still a squad, Herc, that, as Greg Berhalter said, has a lot of talent mm -hmm. playing in some pretty important teams and is eight months removed from being a World Cup squad. So we have to put some respect on Ghana's name. And this wasn't, you know, a 3 nothing over Uzbekistan or Amman. This was 4 nothing in the first 40 minutes over a team that has a World Cup pedigree. Maybe not the greatest World Cup pedigree, but a pretty solid recent World Cup pedigree. The United States, 5, 10, 15 years ago, was not blowing out teams the caliber of Ghana. That was not happening. So to me, as low as you might have felt as a U.S. fan after the Germany game, you got to be feeling just as high after this Ghana performance. The one thing is, Herc, I don't know how many fans really cared about it. I know there's a lot of people watching this game, but did you see the attendance in Nashville? I mean, it was... There was a, it was nobody there. Yeah, if I'm, I'm a U.S. player, I'm feeling really disrespected, really unappreciated. We got one of the best teams we've ever had. We hung four on Ghana in Nashville, and there was nobody hurt there to see it. Yeah, I believe the final attendance was like 18,000, something like that. Mm, but it's, right. it's, it's, That's it's, what they announced. Exactly, and we know announced. how those work, right? Those yes. announcements. It's on the bigger side for soccer-specific stadiums. You know? And Nashville's a great soccer city, right? Well, well, here it is, Seb. When, when you have a smaller stadium, per se, mm -hmm. what happens to the ticket prices? They go up, right? Okay. Whether it's U.S. But soccer. But this is not Oman oh. and Uzbekistan. This is Ghana. This is good competition. Yeah, Sure, I guess it was, right? They could have dropped eight on them. They, they missed four clear-cut <laughs> chances, good competition. What I'm trying to tell you is midweek in a game that is maybe not that mm. high in demand and attention for some fans okay. with the ticket prices that U.S. soccer imposes and the, then the scalpers themselves, the resell, I can see this not being a massive draw. I could right. see this being a game where there is not that much interest. And you're right. I, listen, I don't recall as a U.S. men's national team player playing in empty stadiums. I don't recall that ever being an issue with us. And we certainly didn't have this generation. We certainly didn't have this type of clout with players playing in the leagues and the teams they play for. It's definitely something to, uh, to be brought to the attention.